and welcome back. Thanks for joining us once again. We are now joined on the couch this morning for our third segment by representatives of the Global Cottage as well as the Sisterhood for Entrepreneurs. As my colleague here said earlier, a panel of phenomenal women. Phenomenal women. women. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't> take that. <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And of course, joining us is Miss Miriam DeShield, who is the coordinator of the Sisterhood for of Entrepreneurs. We have Dr. Uh, Iselda Humes. Iselda, yes. Iselda Humes, who is one of the co-founders of the Glo Global Cottage. And we have Dr. Anita Davis Defoe, such a celebrity sounding name, <laughs> who is also one of the co-founders of the Global Cottage. Thank you for joining us, ladies. Thank you Thanks for, having, for us. having us. It's really nice to have a, a, a bunch of roses on our couch this morning. <laughs> So tell right. us a little bit about the Global Cottage and then we can transition sure. to you, Mr. Shield. So the Global Cottage is an international knowledge yep. incubator. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide support services and organizational development mm -hmm. to government agencies, to non-government agencies, including faith-based organizations, uh, educational institutions, and we also do work with private, sec private sector. We provide a lot of support also to entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. in terms of business development so we work with men and women and we also provide social enterprise support to community-based organizations mm -hmm. um, Anita and I have been fortunate enough to provide our services in many countries across the world and so when we got that call from Miriam mm -hmm. asking us to give some of that support to Belize mm -hmm. of course we, we heeded the call so we're very happy um, we feel privileged to uh, serve as the first set of trainers. It's the inauguration right. of the entrepreneurship uh, network and Miriam can talk a bit about that brainchild of hers. Okay, yeah. um, um, I have worked in a business for 19 years now, Animal Medical Center. Um, my husband was the veterinarian and he asked me to help him manage a business. And I did that for about 17, 18 years with no training and last year I was given the opportunity to uh, uh, join an organization Vital Voices Grow, a women's entrepreneur organization that, um, that uh, helps women in Africa, the Middle East and uh, Central America and the Caribbean and it just opened my eyes that here I had been doing business all this time but had never really thought about how I was doing it the um, one of the key takeaways from that group was that you work on your business not in it mm -hmm. and so w that insight was really helpful to me and I thought first of all one of the things I needed to do I felt and the organization asked of us that um, when we return back to our countries that we um, uh, we pass on something so I was thinking you know the realization that I need to know how to how to do my business or work on it maybe I can help share that that knowledge so um, I thought I wondered how I could do it and so this group kind of formed as a result of a way I could give back mm -hmm. um, I realized that there are a lot of women who are or who are in the same position I've been in that they've been working to make money and to support a business but they're not really doing it intentionally. Mm -hmm. They haven't thought about what they're doing about the business side of it. Mm -hmm. So you have people who have a passion for something. I know people in Belize who have had a passion for something and developed a business, but although the product they're making is really, really great, mm -hmm. the business doesn't succeed like it could because they don't have a vision for how to do the business. The soft skills. Mm -hmm. And that's actually quite interesting because I was sharing that um, in my research, I found an article that was actually published in an Asian journal mm -hmm. of social science management, but it's a research that was done in Belize in Cayo. It was published in 2016, and they interviewed 65 women, female entrepreneurs in Cayo, mm -hmm. and they asked them, do you consider your business to be su successful? And they said, yes, and they asked them, well, how do you define success? Mm -hmm. And the majority of them define success as the quality of the product. My, my customer is happy, my client is happy, but they did not necessarily associate success with profit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And I, I think that for a lot of women, you're right, that they're in this business not intentionally to, 
to be successful at you know being recognized across Belize and making a, a ton of money they view their success as the quality of their project of their product and also being able to support their family so from your perspective and of course the perspective of sisterhood of entrepreneurs how do you change that mentality how do you allow for a shift where they understand it at, as more than just what they're doing for survival as a business and as something that everybody else should see the value of it the same way that they see it mm -hmm. uh, well I would say that even though women might be working out of their passion a lot of women are supporting their family uh, they have to do all of the kinds of things that you do in normal day life and you're they're also responsible for a, they have they multitask that's supposed to be the the character of a woman so um, it, f in order to, um, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I think that if women can be thinking about how they can do their business better, they can uh, achieve the bottom line that most people want to do in a, they want to get their business in the black. They can think about expanding their business, moving on, and doing better and greater things. But until you come to the realization that there's another facet to doing business, which I, for 17 years, I didn't even realize that there was this other facet to doing business, how to look at a business, how to think about how to manage people. I don't know if I've answered your question, but... Uh, <laughs> you, did, you did a pretty good okay. job. Now, Dr. Anita, tell us a little bit about your role in the Global Cottage and why you're here in Belize. Well, as uh, Dr. Hume said, I am one of the co-founders and I've spent probably over 25 years working with a, a, a wide range of organizations initially started with grant grant and program development and what i've seen over you know over the years for organizations to really be able to sustain themselves they really have to look into social enterprise because they really can't sustain an organization just on on grant monies and more and more i've been working with with women globally uh, who are looking to express their passion and want to create businesses. But in that work, I've also seen where in the absence of skill sets, in the absence of someone uh, coaching them and mentoring them, and in many instances, uh, women uh, don't have adequate role models that they've seen in terms of operating a business. And so that's kind of expanded, you know, my, my interest and in, in drive in helping women as entrepreneurs really gain the skill sets so that it's beyond just making the customer happy with the quality of the product, but that you're running a profitable, bu okay. profitable business. Uh, as fate would have it, uh, my path across Dr. Dr. Humes, uh, we, we both are very active in the, uh, the YWCA movement uh, globally. And more and more, we were, we were talking about what we were seeing with the development of the wise. Uh, she had this relationship with, with uh, Miriam. And uh, like Dr. Humes, uh, when I'm called to, you know, to serve, uh, that is part of our, our, our passion and our drive with, with creating the Global Cottage and answering the call. And so that's why I'm here in Belize. This is my first time uh, here. Uh, excited as I'm, you know, seeing more and more of the, the country. And I just applaud Miriam for creating uh, the, the sisterhood because that's what women need, a safe space where they can come in, uh, where they can learn the skill sets necessary to run a profitable business. Uh, and often we as women feel that uh, I'm the only one struggling. Uh, and many times, you know, when ego rushes in, uh, or pride, we won't really express our need for knowledge or support. So I applaud her creating this group where women can come together, where they can talk about uh, what they're experiencing in, in the business, how they can share uh, the skill sets. And what it really does is elevate the operations of all the businesses. And, and then over time, it really elevates the community because business development is economic development. And so I applaud Miriam. Well, if you do well, I do well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I want to make sure everyone realizes that um, these doctors have come here and they're offering their help without any payment for this. <laughs> <laughs> and they. Um, this is their business. They're experts at what they do, and out of the generosity of their art, 
Isilda's religion and she's coming back to us. It's sweet, it's great. My honor. Let me ask a question here. What was the reception like when you came up with this brainchild of forming a fraternity or a sorority of, of uh, entrepreneurs? What was the reception like from the people you approached or from the wider public? Okay, so first of all, this is, we will have our first session Thursday and Friday. I'm not doing well with this, I'm sorry. Uh, so this was our first session. The reception was, has been good. I was, I had visited a conference that was um, sponsored by um, Donalyn Mivet. They had a leadership conference and she gave me the opportunity to ask women there if they would like to be part of this network. Yeah. And so um, out of maybe 50, 50 women there, I think there might have been 50, 28 signed up to say that they were interested in the program. So uh, the reception is good. I think people understand that they they're, they, they can learn. I mean, who doesn't know that they could learn something more in whatever field they're in? So um, it's been good. We will see what happens. This is our first session. Mm -hmm. This should be a really good session because they're skilled trainers. Mm -hmm. um, my original concept was that we would have a group that would get together and maybe we'd find people who would uh, talk on topics that are of interest to us and we could discuss it and we could share our own um, issues with our own businesses and just become a kind of a support network. And then when I um, talked to Isilda about it, a whole new world opened up. So what I experienced what, through the VV Grow Fellowship, I mean, might come in some form to us in Belize through these training mentorship uh, kind of activities. And it could be that this develops into something more, a discussion of maybe a quarterly session where we follow up on goals we set we're accountable for uh, for what we've decided to do. I mean, this is this is a new project, so it will be. Um, I have said that this would be one year. Um, we'll see at the end of the year how it goes, but definitely we need to um, follow up with whatever we decide to do uh, Thursday and Friday at the meeting. And, and just to add to that, I'm going to keep going back to, to data. That's just my thing, yeah. and um, I haven't been able to to find a comprehensive body of data, so I have to go back to what was published in the Asian Journal, uh, but it, was, it is data from Belize. And that data is showing that the women who participated in, in that research, they want upskilling. They recognize that in some instances they inherited a business from a family mem member, from a, from a spouse, or it, it was their hobby and they, you know, someone told them, you know what, you could probably make some money out of this, but they don't really have the management skills. They, they yeah. can produce yeah. the product and that's successful in their mind. It's a, it's a great product, it's, 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 quality, um, it's a quality product, but they recognize that there are other aspects to running a business and just that production piece. So the data is showing that there is a need for that. The data is also showing that they're saying, we need guidance, we need a mentor, we need some sort of support system. Yeah. And so I think this really speaks to the fact that everything that the women who participated in this, the female entrepreneurs who participated in this research um, said is exactly what Miriam is, is trying to fashion into the sisterhood of entrepreneurs. So we are, we're very honored that you have allowed us to be a part of something that we know can certainly become um, something that we can have at the district level, at national level. I know that's a lot to put on you, but it's certainly something that I think... Uh, broad chapters. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly, mm -hmm. because it, it's needed. It's needed. Uh, from that, I would like to say that it's very important for people who are doing business to then share. I feel like it come, we need to come from... We need to... Um, Come, it, it has to come out of us. We can't expect someone to hand something, and I yeah. think that's the nature of an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. that you take risks mm -hmm. and you do things. Exactly. And so it needs to exactly. come, out, come from us, and then when we achieve, we help, we mentor, we do whatever we can. Exactly. I don't know that I've reached, I mean, I know I haven't reached that level, but the concept that we could share ideas and share support, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's, where, that's where I'm going. And a part of, sorry. You mentioned uh, Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, what's taking place in terms of either an event or the inaugural gathering? What's to be expected? The, uh, the inaugural gathering will be Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, my business, Animal Medical Center, we have a conference room on the second floor and will take place, it will take place there. And then fr 
the first session. Maybe you could talk about the two sessions. Right. So uh, Thursday night we're going to be doing an assessment. Um, everything is participatory. So mm -hmm. this is not a lecture series. We, we don't do that. We, we try to build capacity by sharing our tools, our knowledge, you know, our experience. So for the, the first couple hours on Thursday, we're going to have different entrepreneurs assess their business and we're going to touch a bit on branding. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday, Yes, on, on Friday, we start out with initial a session uh, that focuses on, and we call it from passion uh, to profits. Mm -hmm. Often, you know, an entrepreneur may have an idea very passionate about it, but how do you make it uh, uh, profitable? Mm -hmm. Then we're going to look at, and you kind of alluded to it, the connection between uh, soft skills, emotional uh, intelligence, and really having the resiliency uh, to really stay the course yeah. if you, you know, because the entrepreneurship road can can be a bit Quite jagged, so, you know, sometimes. Yeah. And then we're going to just do some 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 work around the, the level of, of skills and self-awareness, because the more you understand your, yourself and your strengths and your opportunities for improvement, it makes it uh, easier when you have those, you know, those challenges, you can kind of flip your, your, your mindset and keep the entrepreneurial mindset and realize that this is a learning opportunity for me. How do I, you know, how do I navigate this? And then we share what we have found to be a formula for entrepreneurial success. What are some of the key elements? And so, um, as I sort of said, we're very much about wherever we go, building capacity in the local community. So we share all the skills, all the tools, everything that we have, so that w when we leave, that community is able, you know, to really continue that that work in in that area. So mm -hmm. it's really a it's really a boot camp uh, mm -hmm. in a in a sense. Those skills that an entrepreneur mm -hmm. needs, you know, to really have to be successful. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, and why the concept of sisterhood, mm -hmm. I think, is very important because as women, we don't always share, especially our failures. Yeah. yeah. And the data will show that most startups fail mm -hmm. within the first five. What, one, five. Three, three to five years five. sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, but a lot of people don't share. So someone like Miriam, who's been in business for how long now? Miriam? 19. 19 years. I'm sure there are failures that you can share and people say, oh, that happened to you too? Mm -hmm. So you didn't make a profit your first year? Mm -hmm. you know, and so we want to encourage people to, to have that trust and that confidence in, in other women who have similar experiences yeah. so that they can bounce things off each other. Sometimes you might need that, that shoulder to cry on because mm -hmm. you know, um, the contract you wanted to get mm -hmm. you know, wasn't what you thought it would be. Yeah. Um, your product wasn't as successful. You probably didn't do enough market research. You're not making that profit, what have you. But sometimes you just need that support system. And unfortunately, when it comes to entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. sometimes family and friends mm -hmm. aren't always the best yes. support system mm -hmm. because they're looking at the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Are you making money? You're wasting our money. I, I loan you a thousand dollars. When am I going to get it back? Mm -hmm. And sometimes just that's just a lot for you to deal with. That's one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But you also want someone who will tell you, you know, let, let's talk it out. Let me tell you what I did. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what that other lady over there, that other female entrepreneur who's a part of the system, this is what she did to overcome you know, that problem. Because you know, when you're an entrepreneur, really, you identify your problem and you, you solve it. You're a solutionist. Yeah. And that's a whole sort of mindset that, that we're going to be talking about over the next couple what of years. Find, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, one of the key, key things uh, in, in really having a vibrant entrepreneurial mindset is what we, what we choose to define as failure. Mm -hmm. um, because really it's an opportunity for learning and it's how we choose mm -hmm. to define it. Mm -hmm. uh, in every opportunity there's, there's the learning experience and when we have a setback or we don't achieve the results that we wanted, all it's telling you is you need to change the process. Yeah. Look at the, you know, the process and the strategy. But too often, and this happens a lot to entrepreneurs, uh, they may have a setback uh, one failure and then instead of them learning from it they relive it over and over and over yes. so that really kind of paralyzes them to yeah. really move and to, to grow and to, to rebound so we talk a lot about you know that because the reality in the global world that we're living in everybody is really an entrepreneur and we don't realize it because in essence everybody is selling 
two things to an employer or through your business. You're yeah. selling your skill and your time. It's a very simple transaction. And so changing that mindset and under, you know, understanding it. And even if you, you, know, you research and look at what employers are saying that they want if they're hiring someone, they want people with an entrepreneurial mindset. They want people who are looking at processes, looking at the product and seeing how can we continuously improve. And so that's something you know, that we all can, can learn, whether you ever open up a storefront or not, that everybody is, in essence, an entrepreneur. What I find most impressive about this initiative is that for me, I think it helps to dispel the myth that most successful or profitable businesses are run by men and men only. <laughs> so it kind of it, it kind of uh, puts a different uh, spin, or uh, it gives a different point of view uh, when you look at women who are able to come together. They have a common cause. And they are open for other women to be able to come in and share experiences, share knowledge, and learn yes. from this kind of movement. I find that to be commendable. You know, I, going back to what you were talking about earlier, the, 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 the issue of failure and how mm -hmm. you define it. I don't know what the data is, but what would be some of the, the other hard-hitting topics that you'd really want to drive home when you're having this inaugural uh, meeting and, and, and the subsequent meetings? What are some of the things that you'd want the women to take away, not having this idealistic version of what they've been doing works fine and maybe they just need a little bit of encouragement now and, and again? What are some things that you need them to understand that will allow them to be better entrepreneurs to allow them pe to be more successful in whatever way that you define success and they define success and you know I guess the globe the world defines success and also how do you en en ensure that what they're taking away actually helps them well I would say three things uh, strategy mm -hmm. you must have you must have a strategy and it needs to be committed to paper yeah. Because if you don't have a business strategy and if you're not really working that strategy, then you're really not operating uh, from, a, from a sense of, of strength. You've got to have it. And you've also got to have process management. You really got to document the processes that you're using in your business and you've got to be consistent though with that. Too often uh, we deviate uh, and you think about it in a very simple simple terms if you have five people working in an organization you haven't documented the process you have that you have that process that activity being done five different different ways and then you have to ask yourself the, the this basic question and we start out with this am I really in the in a business or is this just a hobby uh, and that's a tough question you have to you yeah. know to ask yourself um, because if you are in business that means you have to have the functional areas you have got to have the processes and systems in place and then it also means you have to do a reality check what you're passionate about what are your strengths those are the things you need to do in the business those other areas that perhaps you don't really care for Surround yourself with a team yeah. and go and get people to do those things. Uh, if you uh, don't have a lot of capital, uh, you can do bartering, you can do MOUs. There's, there's many ways that you can get the services and the skills. You can use something like Fiverr uh, mm -hmm. for $5. I mean, so there's resources out there. So what we want to do at the, the, at the, the end of our, our, our session is leave the entrepreneurs with a set of the tools, mm -hmm. uh, really give them a road map, yeah. uh, and really give them you know, some strategies for running more efficient and, and effective businesses. And, and understand that it's a journey. It's not yeah. you know, yeah. something that will happen overnight. You're constantly looking at opportunities uh, for continuous improvement. And you've got to be resilient. And you've got to, you know, be able to respond to change. I'll just close and, 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 and say this. You look at uh, some businesses who clearly, as I say it, the cheese was moving in the industry. And they kind of saw it. They, resi they resisted it because 
they were so accustomed to running business the way they they, they ran it. it. Yeah. And then the cheese had moved three or four times, <laughs> and then they found themselves left out of the you know the new ecosystem. And so entrepreneurs have to look at trends, look at data, look at ways to diversify their you know their their products so that you in the end always keep in mind what is my value proposition that I'm offering to the customer and am I maintaining that quality and if I think if we can leave some of that uh, with the sisterhood then I think that the, that for this inaugural session we will have gotten off to a great start. Just about um, going to wrap up but before we do I definitely want the public to know where they can find out more information about the sisterhood of entrepreneurs and of course about the global cottage so we'll start with you Miriam. Mm, I guess the best thing to do would be to give my email address, miriamdeshield at gmail.com. Uh, there are a few places open for people uh, that might want to come on Thursday and Friday. Uh, so if you've listened to the program and you're interested in, in this uh, training, then you can email me, miriamdeshield at gmail.com. But Global Cottage. Right, it's the www.theglobalcottage.com. There's a contact us tag. Um, tab there or info at theglobalcottage.com. Okay, and we'll have all this information on our Facebook page. We, we post pictures. We'll put all that there so you can find where these beautiful women are. Thank you, oh, thank you so much thank for joining so us much. today. I appreciate it. We really appreciate oh, it. Oh, thank you too. We're going to take a really quick break and when we come back we'll be joined by Jaime to talk to us a little bit about what confetti is up to. So stay tuned.